to two, the distributed property. Now there's a lot of information in this particular section, so make sure that you take notes and don't be intimidated by the fact that the video may last a little longer than most of the other ones. So we're gonna go through this quickly. Remember, anytime you're watching a video, you can always pause, copy down the notes, and then click back on. These are all YouTube videos, they're easy to deal with. All right, now let's consider the example here that I have written up, seven times the quantity, 10 plus 40. Now, what we can do is we can work this two different ways. One is, of course, to use the order of operations, which says to add the stuff inside the parentheses, that's the priority here, and then multiply. In this case, seven times 50, 350. But there's another way you can do this, and that's the distributive property. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's the distributive property. And the distributive property allows me to multiply the seven over the sum, seven times the 10 plus seven times the 40. Seven times 10, seven times 40, we'll do those before we add, so that's 70 plus 280, and notice I'm gonna get the same answer as I got the first time through. All right, now the distributive property, it's written as this in a lot of textbooks. Its proper name is the distributive property of multiplication with respect to addition, or with respect to subtraction. That's a lot to say, so we usually just say the distributive property. And the distributive property says that for all real numbers, A, B, and C, a times the quantity B plus C is equal to A times B plus A times C. You're multiplying the A times both parts that are being added inside the parentheses or that are being subtracted inside the parentheses. A times the quantity B minus C is equal to AB minus AC. You can even put the A on the end, on the right hand side, something like this, and distribute this way, and that's B times A plus C times A. It's the same thing. Now you're wondering, well, why would I go through this long method where I could just use the order of operations? Well, that's because sometimes the stuff that's in the parentheses cannot be combined. And you're gonna see examples of that here in just a little bit. But I wanna show you a couple quick applications. This first one here says, at a laundromat, Doug uses two washing machines costing $1.75 each and two dryers costing $1.25 each. What was Doug's total cost for doing this laundry? And you can see my solution that I have written down there. I put two times the sum of the cost of the washer and the cost of the dryer because there's two of these and there's two of these. And that's the way it's written out on the right, two of the dollar seventy-fives, two of the dollar twenty-fives. But either way I do this, by the way, if you add those, that's three dollars, so this is two times three. And here that's gonna be three dollars and fifty cents plus two dollars and fifty cents. You can see this is gonna give me six and this is gonna give me six. So either way I look at this, it's gonna cost Doug $6 to do his wash at that laundromat. Here's a second application. Connie bought five video games costing $14.95 each. Use the distributive property and mental math to find the total cost of the games. So what I'm gonna do here, I know to find the actual cost, I have to multiply the number of games times the price per game. So that would be five times $14.95. Now that's practically $15. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think of this part as $15 minus a nickel. So I'm gonna write this as five times 15 minus 0 0.05. That's the metal math idea here that I'm breaking the 1495 apart like this. So now I'm gonna use the distributive property and multiply through five times 15 is 75 minus five times five cents or 0 0.05 is 0 0.25 or 25 cents. So this gives me $74.75, the cost of those video games. Second uh, group of problems here, it says use the distributive property to evaluate. Now it doesn't say evaluate any way you want it, it says use the distributive property. So you would have to show the step where you're multiplying or distributing through the sum. Three times the seven, 21, plus three times the four is 12, and then I can finish this off, 21 and 12 is 33. Over here, the numbers on the uh, kind of the back side or the right side of the expression, I'm going to multiply it through. Five times the two is 10 plus five, or excuse me, nine times the two is 18. So 10 and 18, that's easy enough, that's 28. Careful with your negatives here. We went over those rules of negatives in the last chapter. I'm going to distribute here. Negative four times 11 is negative 44 plus negative four times two is negative eight. Now I'm adding two negatives, so I'm adding multiple their absolute values and keep the sign and I'm gonna get negative 52. That's the answer for that one. Now uh, here's another mental math kind of a problem. It says evaluate the expressions using the distributive property of mental math. So this is gonna kind of go back to the Connie problem up here. 
I see that this is 105, which is practically 100, just a little bit more. So I'm going to think of the 105 as 100 plus 5. And I'm going to write this as 4 times 100 plus 5. I'm going to distribute. That would be 400 plus 20 or 420. Now that's not always the fastest way to work a problem out, but you are using the distributive property so that when you cannot break this apart, or you have uh, expressions as in the next group of problems, you're going to see how this is to your advantage to simplify the expression. Here, this is just kind of the opposite. This is just almost 100, but 5 less. So I'm going to think of this as 100 minus 5. And I'm going to write this as 3 times 100 minus 5, or 300 minus 15, 3 times the 100, 3 times the 5, and that of course is 285. Almost done here, one more like that. This one is so close to 10, I'm going to think of this as 10 minus 0 0.2. And I'm going to, that's my middle math idea, I'm going to multiply 3 times the quantity 10 minus 0 0.2, got to be careful with that decimal, and I'm going to distribute over the difference, 3 times 10 is 30, minus 3 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.6, and then I subtract and I get 29.4. Now, this definition down here is key because we are always going to be working with equivalent expressions. So here's our formal definition of equivalent variable expressions. Two variable expressions that have the same value for all values of the variable or variables, depending on how many variables you might have in the expression. To write uh, equivalent variable expressions for the three examples that are below, I am going to use the distributive property. I'm going to multiply through here and here. Now I have to be careful because I have a variable in the expression. Notice I cannot subtract 10 minus k because I don't know what k represents. 9 times 10 is 90 minus 9 times k. We write that as 9k. And that's as far as it goes. That's not 81k. That is exactly 90 minus 9k. No matter what number you plug in for k here, or plug in for k here, if you evaluate the expression, they'll be equivalent. They'll be the same each time. A little bit careful here. I have to distribute negative 2 times y is negative 2y, plus negative 2 times 12 is negative 24. Now, there's nothing wrong with the way I have it written, but you could rewrite that as negative 2y minus 24, because adding the opposite is the same as subtraction there. Not that it's better one way or the other, it's just less symbols, no parentheses, maybe a little simpler looking. Over here, negative 3 times 4j, negative 3 times a minus 1. I'm going to multiply negative 3 times 4j, that's going to give me negative 12j. I have a minus sign here, I'm going to be careful because I'm subtracting negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. See what I meant by being very careful here because I'm subtracting a negative, that's the same as adding the opposite. I get negative 12j plus 3. That's my equivalent expression to the original. Okay, let's apply what we've just been talking about with what we talked about in the previous uh, section when we were looking at perimeter and area. Here we're looking at area. We want to find the area of this triangle and of that rectangle. Now we know that the formula is 1 half times base times height. This is the base and this is the height. Now the reason that this is the height is because it's a right triangle and the two sides here that form the right angle, one serves as the base, one serves as the height. It's that perpendicular distance I mentioned prior. So this is going to be 1 half times 10 times all of this. So in parentheses, 3 plus a. Now I'm not done. I can simplify this. Half of 10 is 5. So this is the same, oops, this is the same as 5 times the quantity 3 plus a, or distributing 15 plus 5a. Now we do not have units here. So sometimes what's done is we use what we call square units to represent it, which would be like a little u with a 2. But if we're going to write that next to this expression, we would have to put parentheses around it. You don't have to put that unit squared on these particular problems. Over here, this is length times width. So my length is 2x plus 5, my width is 5. So again, in parentheses, 2x plus 1 times the 5. I'm going to distribute in this problem also. I get 10x plus 5, and this would also be square units. Now the little bit that I have at the bottom shows some examples of expressions involving variables that you're going to come across. Negative 1 times a means the opposite of a. And when you add opposites, we've talked about this before, you will get 0. Even if they're variable expressions, the opposite of a plus a is 0. And in this case, you have the opposite of a times b. So this is equal to the opposite of a times b. 
That doesn't mean the A and the B are both opposites. It means the opposite of this product of A and B. Now, the distributive property is important like nothing else that we've talked about up to this point for you to be uh, able to do problems in algebra, in, algebra, uh, in pre algebra, in algebra one, in algebra two, college algebra, uh, pre calculus, calculus, it just, it just goes on. You have to be in a position where you really practice that distributive property, practice, practice, practice.